Hi, I'm Keith Richardson. I'm the uh, Chair of Community Renewable Energy. This is Black Dyke Industrial Estate um, and we're on the Pearson's farm and this is going to be the site for our first um, anaerobic digester. The anaerobic digester that we're going to build here will be a thousand kilowatts um, and because it produces energy 24-7 um, that will be seven million kilowatt hours a year which is enough electricity to power about 1500 homes. The outputs of it as well as the electricity and the heat that it produces we also have digestate which is a liquid fertilizer which farmers can use and we have 30,000 tons of materials coming in and we'll have something like 26,000 tons of digestate going out which is spread on the farmers land as a fertilizer. This plant um, we've been planning for about two years we're through planning we've got grid connection and we're just finalising the uh, finances to build it and it will cost about £3.7 million. So we've got about eight farmers involved in supplying slurry and silage to the AD plant. CORE is a, a mechanism to help communities to set up renewable energy systems. Uh, basically it's based on the idea that if we help a community set up a, a wind turbine or an anaerobic digester or put PV panels on the roofs, um, we get a share of the profits that that generates. So the idea is that on the long term we will gain income from the community renewable energy systems we help set up. Hello, my name is Angela Middleton. I'm a local farmer at New Silla. We're going to supply silage to the anaerobic digester plant at Black Dyke. It was previously a dairy farm um, and then we decided to change um, and supply the anaerobic digester plant primarily because of the income that we're getting from dairying had dropped dramatically um, and it was very volatile. Uh, it, was, it was either really good or really bad so we thought we would like to go for something that was more um, steady and that we knew the, uh, what the income was going to be off it. I think there's about uh, three of the local farmers, there's about four main people involved with the um, selling the silage um, and then there's two or three other farms going to uh, send slurry. We also estimate that the digestate as a fertiliser saves them um, quite a lot of money. It's worth about four pounds a tonne and for every tonne that goes into the digestion of material the farmer will get back 0.8 of a tonne of digestate. So nearly a tonne for a tonne. Most people are pretty favourable to it. They see it as a, a reasonable and sensible thing to do and we got an awful lot of letters of support for what we're doing. I'm Mike Pearson. We're farming 240 acres, uh, predominantly cereals, and we're also producing 124,000 broiler chickens every six weeks. And the biggest problem we've got is, is a problem with neighbours. Their issues are the smell from the silage clamp and the noise from the digester, uh, the engines. But we've seen them in Germany and there's next to no noise. And If you make good, uh, good quality silage, the, uh, there's no smell off that. And I think as people find out more about them and how they operate, uh, then those problems will go away. So, you, you know, Germany has something like 4,000 of these farm-based anaerobic digesters. We've got less than four or five. It's a natural process and it's very similar to what goes on in a cow's stomach, where bacteria work in a, an environment without oxygen to create methane. In terms of waste, we're bringing in about um, 11,000 tonnes of slurry and um, farmyard manure and chicken waste. And we've deliberately um, kept larger amounts of slurry in our whole process than a, probably a commercial developer would do because we believe in the environmental benefits it brings and because it helps farmers to deal with, with slurry and, and improve the quality of their land. Well, you need some slurry because that provides the bacteria and uh, then you, there are issues that you can't have too much chicken manure because it's, uh, it creates too acid a situation. So there are different materials that you put in that produce better results. The slurry basically doesn't produce much energy because the cow's done its best to take all the energy out of that. Fats produce the most energy, um, but like with us in our digestive system, too, many fat, too much fat in the system creates problems and uh, makes the system malfunction a bit if you like and uh, grass and cereals like that are relatively high energy value. But one of the things that people have looked at uh, 
in terms of agricultural AD is the mixture of food waste and, um, and agricultural feedstocks like grass and silage. And the problem with that is that there's surprisingly little food waste available and the other major issue is that once you put food waste in an anaerobic digester you increase the capital cost by at least 50% because of all the regulations you have to meet to pasteurise the food waste. It'll benefit the farmers in a number of ways. Firstly, it helps those with slurry to deal with that problem and the slurry storage problems that they will inevitably have, as it's likely that nitrogen vulnerable zone regulations will probably apply to most of the country. Um, it helps them um, economically and financially because it um, creates a steady and reliable income, which is probably a bit greater than they would get normally for, for uh, dairy farming or. or growing cereals in this area. And the other interesting thing that we found from our research is it, it, it tends to encourage younger people to stay involved. So I think um, of the farmers we involved in this, it's doubled the numbers of um, farmers' children who want to stay involved in farming um, because it, it provides a high-tech interest and it provides that st stability and security of income. The big benefit to farmers is that digestate is much more easily absorbed by the soil, it doesn't create all the nitrogen runoff problems and it's a much better quality fertiliser for the land. So it improves the soil structure and it um, allows farms also to spread the material more evenly across the year. And slurry uh, is quite a large creator of methane um, so effectively we are capturing that methane and burning it in an engine and methane is 23 times more powerful as a greenhouse gas than, um, than carbon dioxide. Anaerobic digesters are quite an expensive system this is going to cost something like three and a half million three point seven million pounds to build um, we've had a grant from the Northwest Development Agency of um, 375,000 which is a great start um, but obviously we need uh, some of the farmers to invest with that will be a small amount of investment from them but we've also had to involve banks and um, we're hoping to work with the cooperative bank and uh, we've um, had some success with a private equity investor but often equity investors are quite difficult because they want very quick and short term returns so we've been lucky in finding somebody who's taking a more long term view and we've also got some private companies involved who see this as a part of their long term business development strategy. You've got to sort out your feedstocks first and foremost and then you look at what's available. So for this plant, although it's quite big at 1,000 kilowatts, we are getting all our supplies from eight farmers within two and a half kilometres. Of course, you have to go for planning permission, and that's a relatively expensive process. It's not as expensive, perhaps, as a wind turbine, but you've still got to do... It's usually classified as a sub-environmental impact assessment, and uh, it may typically cost Thirty to forty thousand pounds to produce all the reports and produce all the plans. Well, there are issues like noise, smell, visual impact, transport issues that it creates, groundwater contamination, um, flood risk, a whole list of things like that. This site here had a particular issue with a flood risk because it's relatively low down so we had to look at that in more detail. You might end up having to do an archaeological survey, you have to do bat surveys. In this case planning took about a year. Thereafter then you've got to get grid connection offers. That takes about four months from when you first ask for it. And so we are a social enterprise in that we use our profits for a social benefit um, but we do seek to make profits and to maximise profits because we want to maximise our social benefit which is helping communities set up renewable energy systems and we think there's a tremendous opportunity in this country. One of the problems with anaerobic digestion is that you have quite a lot of heat and it's not always easy in a location like this to get rid of all that heat. In other plants we're looking at supplying the village of say Kirkbride with um, heat so that we using a district heating system and there's a lot more businesses there to, to link into. But we think in the long term with low energy prices going up we can provide heat at a pretty low cost um, that, that will attract other heat users to the site and um, generally 
you know, that's one of the ways that it'll help boost the local economy by providing reliable and low-cost renewable energy. We estimate that the system will last at least for 25 years and in that 25 years it'll save something like 130 to 140,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide.